Hi guys, this is gsnone.com and I'm here with a very beautiful handset, also a very slim one. It's called the Allview X2 Soul Pro. It was announced at Mobile World Congress 2015 and is the flagship phone of the company Allview. They've partnered up with the company Joni that makes the Joni eLife S7 and they came up with the Allview X2 Soul Pro. Okay, so as I said, you may also know this phone as the Joni eLife S7 through a partnership with Allview. This is what came up. And in case you're wondering about the price tag, this smartphone costs 400 euros. Okay, so we're dealing here with the very first model with an Allview branding and Android 5.0 Lollipop on board. We've tested a lot of Allview phones during the years, but none of them had a Lollipop. As you can see, it's an ultra slim device only 5.5 millimeters in thickness, it weighs 126.5 grams, it's made of glass, glass at the back, glass at the front, and metal, a metal frame and metal on the sides, and uh, there are chromed edges here that shine beautifully as you can see. The phone comes in black or white and gold, and its internal chassis is made of an alloy of aluminum and magnesium. There's a special uh, production process for this model, it's CNC manufacturing, 100% automatic. The display, the display panel measures 1.4 mm in thickness, the glass at the back and at the front 0.4 mm each one, the camera measures 4.3 mm in thickness and finally the battery 3.2 mm, so everything is ultra slim fitting inside a 5.5 mm handset. The sides are very interesting. They have actually been cut through the middle, so we have two sections here, one metal bar at the top, one metal bar at the bottom. They're rather concave if you look closely and they offer better grip. Imagine gripping two lines of metal on each side, so that's a solid grip. The phone is not slippery in spite of having glass at the front and back. One hand use is okay, as you can see right here, I can access all the areas and parts of the screen without a problem with one hand and one finger. The phone also feels solid, it's not fragile in spite of its small thickness. Now let's analyze its sides. We got the earpiece at the top, front camera here, notification LED and sensor in here, and uh, the bezels are not narrow for 2015 handset. Nowadays it's modern to have a phone with narrow bezels, this one doesn't, but it has pretty discreet bezels. The screen is a 5.2 incher in case you're wondering. At the back, main camera right here, LED flash next to it and a microphone in the middle of the back. Some branding here including the DTS sound brand. At the top absolutely nothing, in spite of that we see two cutouts probably for the antennas. At the bottom we got a lot of stuff, audio jack, microphone, micro USB and the speaker holes. They were happy with just one pair of speaker holes, they didn't use two of them, which is honest because some company put two pair of holes and only have one speaker. On the left side we have the uh, tray here, the tray with two micro SIM slots, you insert a pin inside, pull out the tray and you have two SIM slots. On the right we got the volume buttons and on-off button, all of them with excellent feedback and they're very, very comfy. So overall this is a good looking and masculine phone in spite of its small thickness and the idea with the concave edges is actually very nice and welcome in today's world of copycats and handsets that all look the same. This one doesn't look the same and we like its design. Now as far as the hardware is concerned, this phone brings a 5.2 inch screen, it's a full HD panel with a super AMOLED technology used on it. The processor we've got here, well it's an octa-core processor here. Cortex-A53 clocked at 1.7 GHz, so octa-core Cortex-A53, which one can it be? It's the MediaTek MT6752, the GPU is a Mali T760 and we also have on board 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of storage, however, there's no micro SD card slot here, the cameras, we have an 8 megapixel shooter at the front, uh, 30 megapixel at the back and the connectivity, op connectivity options are pretty varied. We got 4G LT with up to 150 mega per second downloads. We also have HSDPA with up to 21 mega per second downloads, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN, there's Wi-Fi Direct, Wi-Fi Display, uh, OTG connectivity, micro USB and finally if you're wondering about the sensors, accelerometer, proximity sensor, brightness sensor and magnetic. Finally, it's time to talk about the battery, and since it's time to do that, let's go to the screenshots because we have a lot of stuff to show you. 
Okay, so first things first, this is a lithium polymer battery with a 2700 mAh capacity and this phone comes with a charger that offers 5 volts and 2000 mAh in charging. On paper, this battery should offer you 270 hours of standby or 770 minutes of talk time. Our test that involves uh, keeping the Wi-Fi on, brightness of 50% and playing a video in a loop we had a huge surprise and we were able to achieve as much as uh, 9 hours and 54 minutes of continuous HD playback time. So 9 hours and 54 minutes on a 5.5mm thick handset is a huge performance. We're actually above the Galaxy S6 uh, that achieves 9 hours and 49 minutes in our test and we're below the HTC One M8 that achieved 10 hours and 15 minutes also below the iPhone 6 Plus that achieved 12 hours, but that's a behemoth, it's a phablet. Um, I will have to say once again, that's a wow result for a 5mm phone, almost 10 hours is crazy. We also did a PC Mark test, PC Mark simulates continuous usage with brightness at 200 lux and again another surprise was achieved here. We achieved 7 hours and 23 minutes and it beats every other phone we've tested aside from another AllView handset, the AllView P6 that the P6 Energy that achieves 11 hours and 24 minutes. The Galaxy S6 achieved 7 hours and 6 minutes in the same test, so once again surprising, 7 hours 23 minutes. The charging of this model, as you probably expect, takes quite a while, 3 hours and 14 minutes, not very fast, but it's well worth it. Just for the sake of comparison, the OnePlus One charges in 1 hour and 15 minutes. Also for the sake of comparison, the Galaxy S6 takes 1 hour and 10 minutes to charge. I have to mention that the maker of this phone, um, AllView, the company that's behind this phone, claims that it has a special cooling system. It uniformly propagates the heat. It has 8 areas of cooling that reduce power usage. The screen also has special cooling options like ACL, reduces um, uh, consumption by about 25%, so reduced power usage. The CPU also comes with HPM technology that reduces usage by 40%. So everything tries to keep the phone cool and uh, using up as little power as possible. And obviously we have power saving options to handle that as well. Okay, so going to the settings area, it's clearly called power management. Let's see what we've got here. So we start off with power manager that's showing us the estimated time available right now. Then we go to the settings. We got intelligent power saving at night and intelligent memory cleanup plus some tips. And then we get to the actual power saving mode. So first we got none, we got normal. That should give me an extra seven hours at the current percentage. Uh, what it does, this one, well, let's open it up. It's activated right now. And let's go back to the other one for a brighter screen. But let's go to this one and show you what we can tweak. So you can use a dark theme in the background to reduce usage. You can turn off Bluetooth, GPS, syncing, push notifications, adjust screen brightness and adjust the CPU usage, all of that to save power. Finally, there is the extreme mode. It makes your interface black and white and only offer access to the basic feature. Phone contacts, messaging and clock and that's it. That's it. So I have 9 hours promised here, but with the extreme mode, I will get up to 168 hours. So that's a huge jump. And then we got the other option, it's standby intelligent power saving. And then there's the options showing how much battery I have used with the apps. Okay, so overall a very impressive battery. Almost 10 hours of video playback is very impressive for a 5.5 millimeter thick handset. I have to say that the power saving features are also welcome. Continuous usage is also good. And aside from the charging, everything is perfect in the power area. Now, let's discuss the audio. We got the speaker right here next to the micro USB. There are uh, five holes here and there's also the promise of DTS sound written on the back. We have two players on board. The two players are as follows. We got play music and regular music. It's a certain departure from the usual music players we've seen on all view handsets. We got these little icons here and then we got a very minimalistic interface right here. So I guess it's time to actually listen to some music, turn up the volume and press play.
Okay, so uh, the actual acoustic experience is loud, clear, the sound is crisp and the bass is pretty much okay. I like the high notes and now let's see the options associated with the player. We got ringtone, scanning, exit, sleep timer and sound effects. This is the area that's most interesting about the phone. So what you heard before was without DTS and let's try and hear it again. This is without DTS. So you could clearly hear the difference. What DTS does? Well, it makes the sound more ample and louder. We got a few device adapter settings here, special settings for the center headset, earphones, uh, ears headset and uh, regular headset, the big one kind and sound box. They change the experience slightly. Then there is this area here, effects volume. We got a bunch of presets depending on music genre and an equalizer that you can tweak for yourself with five channels available to play with. We also have something called Sound Enhancer, but it requires headphones. And speaking of headphones, let's actually check them out. This is the pair that comes with the phone. It's not a tangle free pair, they can get tangled. They seem to be made of a pretty premium material, I'm guessing this is metal. Certainly not plastic, they sit excellently in the ear, they're very comfy. The sound is very well isolated from the outside world, they're loud, they have an excellent bass. And they also have this big remote here with buttons that are kind of noisy. Ok, so let's connect the headphones and talk about them some more. Ok, so once again these headphones offer an excellent bass, very loud volume, all the notes are heard perfectly and I have to say they sit excellent in the ear and they isolate the sound very well. Thanks to the headphones we can trigger a bunch of extra options, like the ones you saw before, we go to sound effects. You can select any type of headphones here, go to effects and now you can use sound enhancer options like DTS focus, DTS true bass, DTS space, definition and center that will alter your experience in a good way. So a lot of customization for the music experience here which is something to be appreciated. We also have FM radio on this handset, we're just going to have to look it up, here it is, FM radio. You can find the station, search speaker, record FM and that's pretty much it. Uh, it in a nutshell. Ok, so overall very good headphones, very nice uh, music customization options and it's time to see the decibel meter test. We use the decibel meter to measure the power of the speakers and let's see what happened. This is it. We achieved 80.4 decibels which is good. For example, the Huawei Honor 6 achieves 81 decibels, Samsung Galaxy A5 77 decibels, so we beat it, and the Huawei P8 81 decibels, so we're doing quite fine. Another comparison, the iPhone 6 Plus scores 83 decibels, so once again, pretty close to that, and we're doing fine. Acoustics are okay, and headphones are very good. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, this is a Super AMOLED 5.2 incher with a full HD resolution. OGS and full lamination. Let's see the video application. It's available right here, it's very minimalistic. And this is the sample we're going to use to test the screen. Okay, so we also have a pop-up play style feature. You can actually use the video in window mode and keep doing what you are doing, perform another action. Now let's return to the sample and analyze it. So, the image is crisp and clear, excellent contrast, deep black, bright image, realistic colors, there is no oversaturation here, and the pixels, they're of the pentile matrix kind. Actually, looking at the panel, I found it to, to be very familiar, and there is a reason for that. It's very similar to the panel that the Samsung Galaxy S5 used last year. So, let me show you why. I said before, I said the pentile matrix pixels, these are the pixels of the screen under the microscope and these are the pixels of the Samsung Galaxy S5 from last year. Very similar pictures, very similar brightnesses, so they may be related in spite of the fact that this is a 5.2 inch screen and the Galaxy S5 had a 5.1 inch screen. We measured the brightness, we achieved 471 lux on white, which is good, Galaxy S5 had 480 lux. Uh, HTC One M8 463 lux and the Galaxy S6 475 lux last time measured it, so we're doing very fine. 
we got a bright screen, we got good colors and now we go to the settings area and see some of the settings associated with this display. We got brightness level, we got adaptive brightness that optimizes the brightness for the available light, economical backlight to save power, font size, wallpaper, auto rotate screen, sleep and LCD effect allowing you to tweak the colors, we got neutral, cool color and warm color depending on your needs to oversaturate or undersaturate image. Overall a very good display, excellent brightness, colors, contrast, whatever you need, it's there. Now we're off to the cameras. This is a 13 megapixel shooter right here. Is the Sony IMX 214, excuse me. Is the same camera from the Oppo Find 7 and the Xiaomi Mi 4 and the OnePlus One. So Sony IMX 214. At the front we have an 8 megapixel shooter, an Omnivision OV8858, 1.12 micron pixels, 1 fourth of an inch sensor size. Back to the back camera. 1.12 micron pixels and one third of an inch size as well as six lenses available here. On paper the camera has a start time of 0.5 seconds, a focus time of 0.5 seconds and a photo taking time of 0.1 seconds. Okay so I also have to mention that the camera comes with a single LED flash and f2.0 aperture. And now it's time to check out the camera interface. We can see that the startup time was pretty fast. Okay, so let's fire it up again, we got this castle right here and we're going to have a look at the camera UI that feels very simple, it's all black and white for now, many options here and uh, first we start with the settings, we got anti-banding, guidelines, geotagging, countdown timer, picture size, 13 megapixels in 4 to 3 or 10 megapixels in 16 to 9, we got capture mode, touch shot, gesture shot or normal, sound and restore defaults, then we skip straight to the uh, front camera shortcut that allows you to take a selfie and this is the area where you find the pretty much the same options countdown timer, a megapixel shot, capture modes are the same with the main camera and you can film in HD with the front camera in case you're wondering and then there are the flash options and then the main capture modes we've got face beauty that includes a contrast option and a DIY this one allows you to create uh, larger eyes, um, slimming face, whitening of the face and a smoother skin. Then we got filter with a bunch of filters to play with, pretty basic option. And then we got a night mode that requires a steady hand. And then comes the selling point of the camera, at least software wise. It's the professional mode that offers you a few tweaks. You can uh, tweak the exposure. You can also tweak the ISO, white balance, shutter and the focus however you want to using those sliders that remind me of the Nokia PureView handsets. Okay, then we got the magic focus. It's a well-known idea applied by many handset makers. You take uh, pictures with a series of focuses and then you refocus as you please. We also get panorama mode, normal, take any time and uh, normal mode pretty much speaks for itself, take any time, allows you to create a series of shots and then select the best shot, HDR also speaks for itself, then there's also something called pick note, this one allows you to take a shot of a whiteboard, powerpoint and things like that, basically take shots of text and if you're in a college it would be very useful for you. Okay, on the right side of the screen we got the video option with its very own settings, we got scene modes, anti-bending, microphone exposure, anti-shake, white balance, video quality, 1080p, 720p and other options and that's pretty much it. We go back to the camera and the zoom here feels quite fluid as you can see, fluid and the quality remains quite good even at the maximum level and focusing is also very fast as is picture taking, reasonably fast picture taking and this is the shot I've just taken as you can see it's pretty blurry because I didn't allow it to focus enough this one is actually a bit better but now let's actually be patient and try to take a regular shot okay so that's certainly better good quality crisp image and something else I want to mention yes the speed of the camera is good maybe not as good as the um, brand behind the handset said but I have to say that if you keep the screen pressed you trigger the usual mechanism that allows you to separate focus and exposure. 
these are the two separate focus and exposure and set them up however you want to depending on certain areas of the screen okay so keep that in mind quite a few options here interesting ones and the front camera can only film in hd let's go to the gallery now okay now let's have a look at the gallery we took the pictures on a sunny day and then at night and let's start with the shots taken during daytime as you can see we took taken quite a lot of shots so here we are this is shot number one we got pictures on a sunny day and we already played with HDR as you can see it brightens up the peak a bit too much overall I would call the colors quite good a bit too bright in some conditions especially the first pictures and the HDR is also a bit exaggerated in the first shots okay and then there is this red leaf we played with magic focus here and as you can see it worked like a charm we focused on the leaf or we focused on the tree in order to highlight the features of the magic focus option this is a picture that has exaggerated brightness yet another one some of the shots were burnt by the sunny day but not many which is a good thing so the panorama is not very wide the resolution is 8320 over 1712 but the image is very crisp as you can see lately i've seen panoramas on various devices that don't have very good details well this one does and the colors are also quite good Moving further, you can see we got good colors and once again we're playing with the magic focus and taking very nice macros with very good details. As you can see, I keep zooming in and the quality remains great. From all the colors in the world, the greens are best seen in these shots, the images are pretty crisp. A few attempts at macros, very good colors and also very realistic. These pictures are not burnt like the first ones, we play with magic focus again in various spots. And this is an area that's uh, once again too bright, too well lit, but in shadow everything looks fine. I noticed something here, there's a very nice texture of the earth in the pictures involving flowers, which is not something I've seen on other devices. This is taken in full sunlight and I have to say it handles it decently. The colors are not burnt here, well, not very burnt. Okay, yet again a test in the shadows and in the lights. And then we start zooming in, so swan shot number one, swan number two, and we kept zooming in. And I have to say that the level of details is pretty decent for a zoomed in pick. Some more shots of color, another macro or two, and another HDR. This one is actually good, it doesn't exaggerate, but it really lights up the shot. More flowers. And as you can see, in spite of taking so many pictures, the percentage of blurry shots is almost zero, which is quite good. These pictures have that gloss that's usually associated to a flagship, so that's a good thing. We usually imagine a flagship phone having these glossy shots with these good colors, and even when zooming in, the details remain crisp. It may be the contribution of the Super AMOLED screen, it may not, anyway good pictures you can actually feel it's the same camera from the oneplus one i remember those shots and they were pretty much the same which is also good great white balance great exposure and brightness is also good aside from the odd picture with the burnt colors okay we obviously also took some selfies here we go selfie number one and if you really zoom in you can see that the texture of the skin and the beard is very well caught here and the background is also quite nice with good details which even some flagships cannot handle nowadays. Okay, so the selfie is also good and uh, we also tried out the shutter. Once again, good macros, of flowers, good colors and as I said, we tried out the shutter with various settings and we really caught the water drops in the air in these impressive pics, as usual you can see at gallery where we'll publish the text review. Okay, these are daytime shots and we're pretty much done. It's time to analyze the nighttime shots because we also have those. Picture number one with a flash, good details and nice color. The flash is very powerful here. When the flash is lacking or used at a distance, this is what results. Grainy shot, but you can distinguish what's in the image. This is without flash, a bit yellowish and a bit blurry. I have to say that uh, this camera doesn't have a problem with halos around the light and also it doesn't make the pictures too yellowish, they're slightly yellowish, so that's okay. So this is the first attempt, it's a blurry shot, but when you really focus and also activate the night mode, things get really interesting. 
and I was talking before about the night mode I want to show you something interesting picture number one doesn't look like much and as you can see if you really start to zoom in it's pretty blurry however if you apply the night mode everything becomes clearer but also seems to have applied a sort of filter that makes it at the same time gray and yellow so that's the difference between no night mode and night mode becomes clearer but seems to have a filter on top of the image. This is also the case here without a flash, regular shot, without a flash, this is the night shot, very good details and very crisp but again with that filter and finally strong flash again, picture taken at 1am at night, very impressive, very powerful flash. After praising the phone for so long, it's time to get real a bit. Of course, we're not exactly dealing here with an Xperia Z2 or LG G3 or iPhone 6 Plus that were excellent during nighttime. However, if you want to compare it to the capture of the OnePlus One or Oppo Find 7 or Huawei P8 during the nighttime, it's pretty close and you can do battle with them. During the daytime, I have to say that we're about 50% less impressive than the AllView X1 Extreme, which is a phone I've tested last spring. And at that time, it impressed me even more than the Galaxy S5 with some of its shots. So we're about 15% below that model that remains a landmark for all AllView handsets and a sort of a benchmark phone. However, this handset can do battle with the Huawei P8, OnePlus One, Oppo Find 7, and even the Galaxy S5 in some of the shots. Okay, and now, we're off to the video section. That's a bit of a problem for this camera. So let's go to the album and try to find videos in an easier way. I guess I'm going to go to the video app to do that more easily. Okay, video, camera, and those are the vids we've taken using this cam. Be prepared, these are three GP files. Sadly, they're not MP4. I wish they were, but they're not. So video number one. Full HD, 24 frames per second, 14 or 15 mega per second bitrate, which is good. Poor stabilization, level of detail not very good, and a bit dark for a very sunny day. Okay, then there's picture number two, video number two, also 3GP. And as you can see, the quality is appalling when you start zooming in. And overall, this video feels like more uh, 480p than Full HD and the exposure changes violently at least the acoustics are good as you can hear okay we're skipping to video number three filled with colors it handles the wind poorly we got good colors good stabilization and good focus if i remember correctly when i was testing either the oneplus one or the oppo find seven i uh, took a video in the same area here a 4k video exactly in the same area with this train right here so if you will look it up on youtube you'll be able to draw a comparison between this model and that one by the way this one does not film in 4k in spite of having the same camera as those models okay we go to video number four this one is actually good we got good acoustics good detail good exposure change nice water texture good green And we tried out stabilization afterwards, a huge disappointment, no stabilization. There's focus loss, there's stabilization loss, the quality remains decent but with all this jiggling around you cannot exactly tell if it's good or not. So overall zero stabilization here, don't expect that, we didn't expect it anyway, just wanted to try it out. And then there's this video. Sometimes when filming this fountain, some has to experience focus loss, some stabilization problems and motion blur. This one doesn't, so that's good news. And we went out at night, took a video or two. They're very poor. The frame rate drops to 60 fra 16 frames per second and the bit rate to 10 mega per second. And this is video number one. Very blurry, very yellowish. I cannot exactly tell what's happening here. It was a pretty well lit street, I have to say, and in spite of that, underwhelming filming. Okay, and another video, also blurry, dark. Frame rate drop, bitrate drop. 
and overall as far as the film is, is concerned on this handset the Allview X2 Soul Pro I have to say that the video capture is certainly uh, on a lower level than the photo capture the stabilization is poor there is detail loss when zooming in and it's clearly below the filming of the OnePlus One Oppo Find 7 by about 30% and that's only the filming while the photo taking is almost on par with those models if not already on par. Of course the lack of 4K slow motion or fast HD is also a minus for the filming. So good photo taking and bad filming. And then we go to the editing options. Let's pick this flower here and select more and press edit. Then you can play with filters, editing options, crop, state and rotate, mirror and then auto color exposure, vignette, highlights, vibrance, curves, negative edges and posterize, so a lot of stuff to play with. Now it's time to discuss performance and for performance we got temperature for you. After playing 15 minutes of the game Riptide GP2 with 3D graphics, we achieved a pretty high temperature of 43 degrees Celsius. This means overheating on paper, but when holding the device in our hands during the gaming, we didn't exactly feel that the heat was disturbing us. Also, while playing the game UFC, the new one from EA Sports, we didn't feel any heat, so I guess it depends on the game. Now it's time to proceed even further, we're off to the web browser area. Okay, now let's try and load gsm.com. It's reasonably fast, not the fastest in the world, could be faster a bit. Scrolling is very smooth, the smooth experience is associated with Lollipop, by the way. Speaking of Lollipop, we got the stock keyboard here that's well spaced on this screen. Okay, and then we go to the phone section with a nifty dialer as you can see here. If I remember well, this is not the stock dialer. Anyway, we got blacklist, speed dial and settings. This is a dual SIM phone and only one of the SIMs does 3G. We got loud calls, good signal and a clear sound. And now it's time for the benchmarks. We have a lot of screenshots, so let's pay attention. I decided to compare the Allview X2 Soul Pro with its predecessor or so-called predecessor, the X2 Soul and also the Huawei P8 this is a battle between an octa-core 64-bit processor inside this phone. Uh, it's a MediaTek MT6752 with the octa-core MediaTek MT6592 of the predecessor and the Huawei P8 octa-core Kirin 930 64-bit but that phone has 1GB of RAM extra. So in quadrant we scored 15,920 points beating the predecessor, the Audio X2 Soul that had 14,000 points also beating the Huawei P8 and that had 13,552 points next up there's um, an Tutu with a very good score 44,823 we beat the X2 Soul that had 27,000 points we got beaten by the P8 by about 4,000 points there's also the Nenamark test with once again a good score it's 61.2 frames per second, the X2 Soul has 57.2, Huawei P8 60.4 frames per second. We also got Velamo in here somewhere, let's look it up, 2920 in Chrome while the X2 Soul has 2624 and the Huawei P8 2849 and then there's 3D Mark, one of the most relevant benchmarks, 10,716. We beat the predecessor by about 3000 points, got beaten by Huawei P8 by about uh, 2000 points. There is also GFX. An aspect interesting here, we couldn't test the T-Rex off-screen 1080p test, it offered a network error, but we tested the regular T-Rex, but we got 17 frames per second, the X2 Soul had 8 frames, and the Huawei P8 15 frames per second, so we beat them both. And then there is Geekbench 3. 820 in the single core test, 4140 in the multi core test, actually pretty good scores. The X2 Soul had 445 and 2484, if I'm not mistaken, while the Huawei P8 had 867 and 3588. Then there's the speed test that's available right here 24.4 mega per second download, 20 in upload, and a 26 millisecond ping. This is via Wi Fi while the X2 Soul had 12 and 19 mega per second and the Huawei P8 26 and 21 mega per second and then we're back to the browser tests with browser mark a pretty low score 825 uh, we beat the X2 Soul by only a few points and uh, we got beaten by the Huawei P8 once again by only a few points 854 
Sun Spider, where the lower is the better. And we had a pretty big score, which is bad. 1148, we even got beaten by the X2 Soul that had 1074. And the Huawei P8 had 930, so better than us. There's also Base Mark X with a score that's very close to the Huawei P8. 13,918, the P8 had 13,474, so overall, after these 11 benchmarks, we beat the Huawei P8 in 6 out of 11, and we're actually not very far from Snapdragon 801 handsets from last year, which is a compliment. By the way, we beat the X2 Soul in 10 out of 11 benchmarks. This is a lollipop phone with minor customizations, it has absolutely no lag, I actually kept a lot of stuff open in the multitasking, even including some games, and still it runs perfectly. So no lag, and it can run the game UFC very fine, and also Riptide GP2 with its cool 3D graphics, effects, dynamic illumination, and everything you want. Dynamic lighting, water effects, speed effects, good physics, basically everything you need. The Super AMOLED screen looks really fine here, and the water looks great, you can see it's a good uh, GPU. The details set to max, physics engine rumbling. I guess we're going to have to jump on some waves, and nice water drops on the screen, as well as a nice sunlight effect. Okay, so no lag and the games work perfectly, even those with 3D graphics. It's time to analyze the OS and UI here, so let's start by finding out the OS version. It's Android 5.0 Lollipop with minor customization, but they may be minor, but they really jump into your face once you start using the phone. It keeps the basic experience and offers a flat UI, also material design elements, you can see that here, it's all abstract, there is no gloss, and there is a bit of color here, but the unique color that Google has implemented with material design. We got smaller contours for the icons compared to the previous OS, KitKat, and if you keep press the home screen, you'll see the apps, widgets and effects area. The widgets are actually pretty cool, uh, and there's also a few of them, I've seen phones out there that have dozens of widgets, this one only has a few and pretty repetitive ones, so it doesn't make uh, a huge deal out of widgets. Then there are the effects, and speaking of widgets, there's a cool one here, if you tap it, it makes a cute 3D effect, this is the weather and time and date widget. Okay, other than that, we got apps and effects in that area, and um, if you tap the virtual recents button you can see all the apps you've been using in a carousel swipe to the side to close them and if you top if you tap this three dot button here you can open up some interesting new options we got launcher team with a few launchers offer for you teams and wallpapers we've also got the option to edit the desktop which we did before and we got search among the apps and i guess on the web as well i guess we got wallpaper again we got desktop settings that include desktop loop, scroll up desktop, reset layout of current team, or change the style of the main menu to landscape or portrait. And then there's system settings that takes you to the main settings area. Okay, if you swipe down from the top, you can see the notifications available here. And uh, there's a button right here on the right that allows you to select the important notifications you want to receive. And there's a big list here so you can choose what you really need. You have probably seen me do this throughout the review. If you swipe up, you will trigger the quick settings area. Unlike the other phones, the notification area and the quick settings area aren't unified at the top. On this phone, it's customized and you have to do it just like in iOS. Swipe up to access the quick settings that include connectivity options and also this option that allows you to customize a screenshot and fit it wherever you want. Okay, back to this area. There's a brightness slider and shortcuts to the torch fake call, calculator and camera. And now we're off to the settings area. That includes an airplane mode, wall sim settings, connectivity settings and stuff like that, date and time, sound and vibrate. Do not disturb is also here. There's uh, notification center options and control center options, like accessing that window that you swipe up for in the lock screen. 
There are also display options, security options, location options, and finally, advanced settings. Here you can find smart gestures, like for example, smart dialing, you pick up the phone to your ear and you start dialing a number, smart answer, pick up the phone to your ear, you answer a call, pause alarm by flipping the phone, double tap to wake, wake up the phone by waving the palm like that, um, unlocking the display by waving the palm, and waving the palm to slide the desktop, Okay, so we activated this, I'm curious if there is a tutorial, so let's actually try it out, I won't promise anything, but you can try and use it. Okay, let's maybe try and unlock it, like that. As I said before, I cannot guarantee anything, so let's have a look again to make sure everything is set up in order. So, smart gestures, activated from here, touchless wake up. Wake up the phone by waving the palm over the phone in sleep mode. Okay, so here we go. Well, that worked. And now let's try the other thing, touchless image browsing. Okay, so gallery, image. Well, seems to be working, so no problem here. Had to be activated, was a bit shy of the first attempt. And advanced settings again, smart gestures, deactivating them, there's a ton of them to play with, which is a nice thing. We got a suspend option, basically a floating widget with extra virtual buttons, which I usually say no thanks to. LED light option, storage, schedule power on off, backup and reset, permissions for apps, accessibility and finally printing. Okay, it's time to... Uh, discuss the apps list, but before that I want to mention something. You're probably wondering where the app drawer is. There is a very very small shortcut here. Actually I would say too small. The ones who made the interface didn't exactly think it through. Anyway, let's view the apps list. We got Bitdefender as the first app. We also got a browser, calculator and calendar. As far as I know this is not the stock calendar. And check this out, you can organize apps by letter from far to near or by click counts. Back to the list, we got something called Chameleon, which is actually very funky. You can select three colors from around you and make a wallpaper. So let's bring back the castle and allow the camera to find new colors. As you can see, it looks around, tries to find new colors and creates a wallpaper from that. You press preview, those three colors are turned into a brand new look for your phone. Okay, so it reminds me a lot of the experience that HTC offered through its Teams app. Basically the same concept. Back to the app list, as I said, calculator, calendar, chameleon, chrome, compass, contacts, drive. There is also email, Facebook, file explorer, FM radio, gallery. There is Gmail, Google+, Plus. there is hangouts and maps. That looks swell on the Super AMOLED screen. It's pretty precise, works like a charm and looks great, also lag free. We got messaging, we got music, we got notes, so you can scribble your notes here. And we also got the play suite, play books, play games, play music, play newsstand and play store, self care, photos, sound recorder, system manager, allowing you to clean the cache, manage the apps, save some power, check out the traffic and something called pure so you can keep the green background closed, whatever that is. that is. We got the theme park here, torch, video, voice search, weather. It's not AccuWeather, it's Army weather. Looking pretty simple, it cannot be compared to the beautiful uh, HTC Sense application, but I guess it will do. And we also got YouTube and Zedge. It's time for the verdict now, so let's see what the AllView x 2 Sol Pro gets from us. So the pros and cons, well this model is slim and elegant, nobody can deny that. We got those unique concave edges, we got Android Lollipop on it, with a few customization, it obviously has no lag as you just saw, it can run any game in the Play Store right now and I guess for about a year more. It has good picture taking, a fantastic battery, especially for this small thickness, it has very good headphones, a pretty bright screen, a good selfie camera and finally no bloatware and no lag. On the con side, you only get 16GB of storage, of which 11 are free and there is no microSD card slot. The video capture is rather poor compared to the photo capture, especially since it's in the 3GP format. There is a slight overheating here, there are confusing UI elements, for example this thing may feel a bit confusing, swiping up for your control center, feels like iOS, not Android, and also the small app drawer shortcut 
may be confusing. And finally, um, I have to say that overall it's a good phone, especially design-wise. That's why for design it gets a 9.6 out of 10 from us. And for the hardware, 9.4 out of 10 and finally for the operating system and user interface it's lollipop it's rather pure it's fast and has no lag 9.6 again the final grade is 9.53 out of 10 for the allview x2 soul pro here at gsnom.com the main points well the very long battery life the original design good camera good price and i have to say um that this phone is also known as the johnny e-life s7 that has been customized by the company allview from romania and dubbed allview x2 soul pro so the final grade is 9.53 out of 10 for this handset a pretty good phone and a must buy if it's available in your region bye bye